Yo, what's up everybody? How's it going? Today we're playing some World of Dota, which is of course made by Panda Life. And I'm sick. Sorry, I just, I'm not feeling well today. So, um, we're just playing some World of Dota. I hope you guys enjoy it and let's get right into the game. Hello, friends. As I said, I'm feeling a bit sick. So, we're gonna play a hero that is dumb and doesn't require too much thinking. We're playing anti-mage. <laughs> And we're just gonna go for agility anti-mage. We've actually never done that before, so just regular old classic agility anti-mage. I mean, doesn't get more straightforward than that. We might even not go universal, even oh, probably should, right? Like probably should go universal, but it, why 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 do we always have to do what's optimal? Let's just be agility anti-mage. I feel like anti-mage to me is kind of like the most prototypical of agility heroes. And why don't we embrace that today and we just be anti-mage in his entirety. So, uh, we have this right here, which uh, lets us use a uh, counter spell to create an illusion. It's a pretty strong illusion and this entire build is centered around the illusions. We get blink fragments and uh, our illusions are all around just kind of like a, a focus, I suppose. It's just something that we do. We, we try to use illusions and be effective with illusions. Um, but let's have a quick little look if it has anything that helps us actually know. So, uh, one of the problems illusion heroes have is that they need to all clump up on the enemy target, right? Like, if you're an anti-mage and you have 10 illusions that are trying to attack the same unit, they actually have to somehow get there. <laughs> and uh, that's why the anti-creep build is pretty nice, because anti-creep has a talent that makes it so that all of your units have unit walking. So all of your illusions can easily clump up on top of the opponent. But Anti-Mage doesn't have something like that. And that makes him, yeah, a little bit less dependable. But he does get the option of just kind of creating illusions really easily. Which is nice. That helps. Although I think Anti-Creep gets that too. Either way. <laughs> this isn't about Anti-Creep now, is it? Today is about Anti-Mage. So we're gonna do some anti-maging. That's right. And we'll see how it goes. Take down you guys. Yeah, sorry, I've just, I don't know, just kind of sick. Uh, I've, I've been feeling sick for like the last week, kind of in general. And, uh, but I, I didn't want to get sick because I had like, you know, like a tournament I had organized. And I'm like, man, I don't want to have to cancel on everybody. So... I wasn't sick. I was kind of like, no, I'm just not gonna get sick. <laughs> and uh, we did the tournament and everything was fine. And then immediately afterwards, I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm gonna get sick now. <laughs> Does that make any sense? <laughs> the mind is a powerful force. It actually is though, right? We'll get a point into Blink. One of the unfortunate things about this build is that we want to max out um, Counterspell first. And uh, Counterspell is just kind of like a little bit ass. It doesn't really do anything. I guess it does do something now. It summons an illusion, right? Hello. I don't want to fight, so I'm, I'm just, just going to go somewhere else. No, well, nothing here either. Well, I guess we'll just wait. Pick up this rune and um, then move from there. Ooh. Don't really want to fight you either, to be honest. Generally, not super keen on fighting. Because I'm anti-mage. I don't actually have that much I can use to fight with. <laughs> now, a question I have is, should I go for some sort of farming tool? I don't usually do it. Hmm. And I don't know. It just seems so thematic for anti-mage, I guess. That's what it comes down to. We get Blink Fragment, which I can now use to teleport... No, to summon an illusion on the target enemy. So I can use that to summon an illusion here. And I've got more illusions all over the place. Oh, wait. It summoned an extra illusion from the counter spell. Huh, interesting. That's actually pretty neat. So I want to spam Blink Fragment and then use Counterspell. I 
So rude. So rude. But yeah, if I do this, that gets me a whole bunch of illusions. Oh, that's actually kind of neat. Like, it's a, it's a cool little synergy, I have to say. Grab Mana Void. And level up you. Gotta get ourselves the agility going on, right? Don't have too much yet. Haven't even turned myself into an agility hero. <gasps> None shall hinder me. No, I feel like we might have that covered anyways. Okay, summon a bunch of dudes. Man, avoid this really quick. I don't think we'll get to use Man, avoid here. Oh, wait, am I dead? Is that enough? Holy shit. Okay. All right, all right. I mean, I'm okay with that. It's it's a little bit annoying. I just wasn't expecting it to deal that much damage. Battle Fury has an upgrade in World of Dawn. Yeah, but then I'm still buying a Battle Fury. And then I'm upgrading it. That's even worse. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> no. Timer ran out. So it seems to me like the eventual spirit is just kind of a slightly higher level, which... Should be enough to win this one. One sec. <laughs> Apologies. Magic missile coming out. There's a meteor. Pretty sure that he's just visible. <laughs> yeah, he just doesn't do anything. <laughs> Very good being sneaky, though. Very good. Yeah, I mean, the bench isn't engaging because she doesn't really have to. She can just poke every once in a while. And then she'll win. Although, admittedly, just go in and just hit him. What's he gonna do about it? He's clearly not fighting back. <laughs> so I feel like the Vengeful Spirit... Look, I get that she was just playing safe, but she really could have saved us all some time there. If we level this up, we get extra charges. That's pretty nice. What does this do? If the counter spell reflected the spell, then it creates an illusion. This seems really terrible, because that requires us to reflect something, right? So I don't think I'm gonna level this unless I need to invest points into something. Which is looking like a very real possibility. I think I will, but like, wouldn't I rather have lifesteal? I mean, I guess I'll get it, because we're, we're playing anti-mage. But that, that's just not, that's not good. Unfortunately. The problem is really just that uh, reflecting something is actually kind of hard. So, having a reflection to be a condition for that thing to even do anything is no well, it's 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 harsh the issue comes down to um who has the agency in a situation really right if i'm just playing against the hero where i can't reflect anything then then you know that that entire talent won't help tile lobby has target spells sure but that doesn't mean I'll actually be able to land it. I'm just saying that it's it's something where if we get it, sure, it's nice. But we need to get it. We need to actually get there. And one of the problems we have is that we are not trying to use Counterspell defensively. If Counterspell was entirely a defensive ability for us, I think absolutely this would be probably... Yes. No, it still wouldn't be good. But it would be sort of reasonable, right? But we're trying to use Counterspell to summon our illusions, right? To build up our army. So if we use Counterspell to summon an illusion, we obviously can't then use it to reflect an ability. So we either have to not summon an illusion and then try to get a reflection to kind of like summon two illusions, 
Or we just won't be able to use the thing because we use it to, we just, we, you know, got ourselves the illusion that we need to really do something here. Ooh, I am gonna summon an evil demon. And you should summon a thumbs up on the video. <laughs> <laughs> so if I summon two of these on a target and then activate this oh that's a lot of illusions that's actually really nice it's quick it has a bit of a cooldown so we need to be careful with it but it seems reasonably powerful Oh. Yeah, you can see then that in pretty much all of these situations, I can't use my counter, fe counter spell to reflect because I already used it. It's on cooldown. Oh, no. Would you mind? Oh, man. <laughs> nice. The illusion spawned in at pretty much the perfect spot. That's very good. Oh, it doesn't work on creeps. That right there was pretty much the perfect situation for counter spell. Because the uh oh hello. Because the dazzle really struggled. Couldn't really do anything. Mm-hmm. There's the Sunder. I don't think I actually have enough to fight this. Please don't run. Oh, it's just an illusion. Well, then why are you wasting my time? <laughs> Hello. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna focus on farming him. So that's our Manta Star. Uh, probably want a Diffuser Blade. Just to have an additional slow. It's also good stats. Here's Manta. Get ourselves extra agility gain. Man, this is... It's not good. <laughs> Especially since it's three points. <laughs> if it was a single point, it might be okay. If it was a single point, I would be... I would still think it's not good, but I would not be offended. But it's three points. That's just too much. For three points, I can get like a bunch of life steal, like twenty-one percent life steal. I think I will. Well, attack speed first, but life steal wouldn't be bad either. No. It's looking to me like we might already be saying goodbye to the invoker. That seems that seems likely at this stage. So what are we going up against anyway? This Agility Dazzle, Agility Antimagus Me, Strength Weaver, Agility Oracle, Int, um, Ventral Spirit, and a Strength Terror Blade. And soon to be a, <laughs> a dead invoker, <laughs> presumably. <laughs> I mean, I guess it is winnable. Not like that. 
Is this a universal build? It would probably be strong if we went universal. That doesn't mean we will do it. Counterspell passively reduces spell damage from opponents. And then Counterspell passively reduces spell damage from opponents. So like... I can get this to reduce spell damage by 30% for 4 points. Late game. Oh man, guys, I think we're going universal. I think we're going universal just because nothing else is worth getting. <laughs> Universal purely just because what else am I gonna do with my stuff? It's not time yet. Oh, that bounces like that. Okay. None shall hinder me. I am <clears throat> pay as dearly. Spawn of sorcery. So what do we do? Do we play for the build how it's intended, or do we try to make it good? I think we try to make it good. I'm sorry. I think we gotta we gotta try to make it good. What's the point in intentionally griefing ourselves, right? I go. No. I go. So agility, um, and then we'll just go for probably like some movement speed. Nice deal wouldn't be terrible. Oh, you you do a lot of damage. Oh my god. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What was that? <laughs> Trick us on all enemies in the radius. I guess it's not that bad. I I didn't have my ultimate. Yeah, our damage output isn't great. That's really the main issue. We can burn people's mana, but... But you know, that's, that's where, I, where it ends. Oh, hello. Was an act of Pick up this. More agility. Yes. I think I will go basher. Nice. I mean, having Counterspell is handy. It does block some heroes from defending themselves against us. Or from us. And that's just... That's really helpful. That poor bench, she can't really do very much. Ooh, big creep. <laughs> Welcome to the party, bud. <laughs> We can summon a lot of illusions very quickly, but we can only do it once, so we have to be careful. It looks very impressive, but after we've used it, we've used it, and then it's on cooldown for a while. So... Basher. Diffusal Basher plus Disperser? Yeah, probably. I don't think I'm going for, like, Abyssal Blade. Oh, hello. Hmm. Okay. Wait, where did she go? I'm just not really super keen on leveling up this right here. Talents that are literally worse than this. Like individually worse. I don't know. Seems very strange to me. I don't know why it would be useful. It has such a huge radius. And I understand that that's just kind of imitating the regular Dota upgrade. But it's got such a huge radius. For no reason. In normal Dota, that's good because it helps your team, right? It protects your teammates. But how does that help me here? That's just me. 
Me and my guys, I guess, but... None shall hinder me. Um... I think I'm just getting more from the speed. Thanks. I think I'm fine. We just burn people's mana. Am I dead? I'm guessing I might be dead. Not to this, but to whoever is coming to kill me. And, uh... I'm guessing somebody's coming to kill me. So this increases the outgoing damage of all of our illusions. And that's actually nice. That's pretty significant. So I'll pick up some nice steel. And we're gonna go for the, um, this right here. I'm hunted, so doing this while hunted might be a bit silly. Just poking. Just saying hello. Is this better? 15 attack speed? Suppose I might as well. This one is tricky. Oh, instinct tells me the Oracle. But I do not believe fully. I think this can go either way. I, go. I have a minus 40% on that poor bench. Well, I guess it would be good to knock out the bench just so we don't have to deal with that anymore. Oh, I don't know why the Oracle's sitting here. Isn't he just gonna die? Hmm. As thou I don't think playing for distance is gonna work for Oracle at all. Isn't this a right-click build? That was good. That was really nice. Wow. I mean, if Straka doesn't land specifically that play, I think he's just dead. But he got it. But I also think he just kind of made this more difficult on himself than it needed to be. Oh, Counterspell reflects spells. Well, that's handy. For just a single point. And I get some stats. See, this is good. This right here, if this gave me some stats, you know, maybe make my illusions be a bit tankier. I think... I think that would be fine. That's really the main difference here, right? Like these kinds of upgrades, what they need is they, they need some secondary benefit if you want to keep them as just kind of these regular Dota adaptations. Bonk. Come with me, gang. I guess we'll go do this first. Yes. Out of my way. Nothing here. We'll pick up the Eagle Song. And we're probably staying in this area. Just because it's about to respawn. And I can do a nice little rotation through it. Oh, hello. Mm, the haste rune is annoying. It's also still going for a while, so I don't think I can catch him. 
I do feel like we would have easily won that fight, which is nice to see. Wait, he's here? Oh, that haste rune ran out, though. Oh, <laughs> oh that's not good. Am I dead? Oh, I died to the Terror Blade. <laughs> that was kind of funny, though. With the Weaver. The Weaver healing off of my illusions. That does really feel like a bit of a bad matchup, maybe. Because he hits everything, but I'm not sure what I can do about it. I drained, I drained all of his mana. I feel... No, the biggest problem is just that we don't do enough damage. If I just did a little bit more damage, you know, it would be fine. It takes me too long to kill people. So long as we can fix that, which we can, we'll be fine. I suppose that's kind of a, a thing that Universal has brought to this game. Is that a bunch of builds that are just awful. Well, you can duct tape fix them by just going Universal. And in a way, maybe that's a good thing. I mm. feel like it also goes the other way around though. Right there, the, the good builds that can use Universal well become even better. Who was that? Has it? Mm -hmm. This is an auto trigger. Just blocking him in. We don't want the Dazzle running away now, do we? So we have this. Then we can come in over here, and it's nice because we get some attack speed as well. None shall hinder me. Oh, this, this, oh, I don't know about this one. Alright, new strategy. Just don't summon illusions, maybe? Yeah, I think. Damn it. I was actually fine, right? <laughs> I shouldn't have summoned the illusion. Okay, so against the Weaver. We just don't we just don't summon the illusions. I think I think that might be bad. Unfortunately that is a significant portion of our build, but hey, sometimes we just need to suffer like that. Bonk, bonk, bonk. I go. As thou will it. Pick up all of these. So this should help a lot. People already have a lot of life steal. There's a bunch of satanics, right? These two have satanic. I'm guessing the dazzle's stronger, but it's hard to tell. Terrorblade has one, Weaver has one. Am I the only one that doesn't have a Satanic, I guess? I don't know, it doesn't seem as important for to me. Ooh, the disarm is brutal. Holy. Okay, I severely underestimated how effective that would be. It's crazy. So we're already guaranteed Universal. That's nice. We already have enough points. It's always kind of the worry, right? If you if you need to go Universal, that you gotta make sure you actually have enough points. Heaven's Halberd seems good. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't think it's super good against me in particular. 
So I'm not particular. I'm I'm not really that worried, but it could be okay against everybody else. But uh, then I have a Heaven's Halberd in my inventory. I'm not sure what I would. I mean, I guess I dropped the boots. Although we might actually get an Abyssal Blade here, because like I feel like damage, um, damage block might actually be handy. <laughs> Just funny, but yeah. Of course, we also get the active, but. It's mostly about the damage block, to be honest. Oh no! Wait. Oh, he's already out of mana. Come on, we can do this now. No! Damn it. Saw that too late. I was so focused on making sure I actually killed the Weaver. <laughs> it's my kill. They worked hard for it. Wrong? No, it's just free dude. You gotta be a little bit delayed on that. If I cast Blink Fragment and immediately counter spell, you don't get an extra illusion. Just a bit weird, but it's the second time that has happened. Man, where is everybody? Oh, I found somebody, I guess. Oh, no. Coming from behind. Okay. Very rude. But I think I got the kill on the Terror Blade at least. Chad, man, I'll be getting Dota 2 but friendly fire. That was already a thing. Mutation mode, remember that. Mutation mode was cool. Although, I have to admit, as much as I liked it in concept, I didn't actually play it that much. That's always the tricky thing, right? In case you don't remember or you weren't there, um, mutation mode was uh, like sort of an official custom game that Valve made for a little while. I'm not sure if it was part of like a compendium or something like that, but it was something you could queue into regularly in Dota. And the way it worked is that every lobby had three random mutations. Right, every match was a little bit different because you were always given uh, different mutations for the match. And a mutation could be a range of things, a variety of different things. And one of the possible mutations was that you had... Um... Wait, how did you cast that? Ash? It's fine, we got it. One of the possible mutations was Friendly Fire. And I always liked Mutation Mode because it was just kind of like a, a fun little spin on Dota. It was like an official Dota 2 custom game. But I don't think it was ever all that popular, like in terms of actual player numbers. And that's probably why it was retired. And that doesn't surprise me. You know, people ask, why doesn't Valve do stuff like maintain Aghanim's Labyrinth all year round? And... One of the real answers to that is that it's, you know, a lot of work and they don't want to. <laughs> like, that's that's part of it, yes. Alright, let's just kill this guy first. He annoys me. Oh, wait, no. Oh, everybody's here. Oh, I'm dead. Damn it. 
So one of the answers to that is that Valve just, you know, they don't they don't want to. But why don't they want to, right? What's what's the cause for that? And I think it ultimately just comes down that even stuff like Aghanim's Labyrinth, while it is popular, like people enjoy it and people do play it, it isn't popular on the scale where, you know, it's worth maintaining over regular Dota. And you can't do everything. You just can't, right? Resources invested into Aghanim's Lab would take resources away from regular Dota. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Alright, so Heaven's Halberds are coming out. No. Okay. I'm not falling for this nonsense again. This is actually pretty decent, I think, but I don't, I don't know. Here we go. Let's just get this. And next up, we just get ourselves uh, omelet, and then we're good. <clears throat> but even stuff like Aghanim's Labyrinth, I would guess, is not actually doesn't actually have like a significant portion of dota's player population and that's because i feel a lot of people if it comes to these kinds of events they go and they play it once or twice and then they've had their fun with it and then they go back to regular dota and i'm not like i don't think that's necessarily like a, a flaw with the modes or a fault of the people i think that's just like how they are supposed to function and i think that's just okay Right, like it can be something that you just move on from afterwards. <clears throat> but yeah, that's why I feel like they just have never been. That's why they've never like made anything permanent like that. Yes. Mutation mode was so fun. My favorite was the pocket tower and the map flip mutations. Pocket tower was a really cool one. Yeah, a lot of the things that we see in custom games, even to this day, actually come from mutation mode. Like they. They pop up every once in a while. Yes. In that way, I think Valve do a pretty good job with like their events, but they just kind of like put quite a lot of emphasis on making sure that when an event happens, it is actually popular and people are excited for it. Now, did you find the real one? Oh, why am I taking so much damage? Holy fuck, you hit hard. No way. I lose? How? Oh, it's this. So if I, I, I also don't want illusions against them. It's not what I'm, what I'm hearing. God damn it, illusions are just not good. <laughs> so if I attack him with a million illusions, he's just counter-attacking me a million times. Hmm. So do I just win if I don't use my illusions? No, because I miss too many attacks. I think Manta Star has to go. It doesn't, like, bo against both the remaining heroes, our illusions are actually shit. Right? So, I think we need to stop building... Stop doing illusion stuff. That's disappointing. I mean, obviously we need true strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. But like, as a, I, I think is one of those kind of unfortunate things about World of Dota. And this isn't necessarily a fault. It's not necessarily something that's wrong with it. But it just is how it plays out. But as you go through a World of Dota match, you kind of filter out players, right? So what you do is you filter out problems. You beat the people you can beat. 
And then at the end, they are only the people that are difficult to fight against. Which means that heroes that have a clear weakness by relying on something as shit as illusions, for example, <laughs> tend to have a bit of a harder time in the late game. Alright, we got him. Yeah, I mean, legitimately not using the illusions makes me more powerful. So that's disappointing. Oh, gotta go. None shall hinder me. Hmm. Was I, obvi I obviously don't want any of these. The path is clear. Hmm. Do we like anything here? Oh, double damage. Oh, we gotta go. No. The true path. I gotta get out of there. I like the out of my way. Oops. Thanks, Antimage. That's how I feel, too. Seven attack speed. Six strength. An active that is an extra attack. An active that's an extra attack is not too bad. But I think, actually, I'm just going to go with the attack speed. So I have an inventory slot. Hmm. I go. I mean, funnily enough, I do think it's coming down to Heaven's Halberd. You need to out damage the Oracle. I don't think that's true. So my plan is gonna be, I think I will use my illusions at the start of the fight in the final duel, and I will use them kind of just to to establish. I will use them from a distance, not go in, just to burn mana. And to be a bit annoying. And then after the illusions have been killed, that's when I go in. Sort of like this. Alright, so I've got my illusions here. Oh, you dodged that. Well, that's unfortunate, isn't it? Uh, I would have won that. Okay, well, this is nice. We'll get the Tomb of Aghanim. Sell the Manta. The Vine? I don't think the Vine is all that good, to be honest. Okay. As thou will it. All right, he's out of mana. Gonna need another bash. There it is. We disarm that. So I think that's gotta be the plan, right? Just burn the mana first. Oh, I don't have enough money for this moon shard because I didn't. Because I wasted too much money on a Manta Star. Damn, that sucks. That's actually really unfortunate. Alright. Oh, I think he thought I was in there. Mm. 
Okay. The path is clear. <laughs> Somebody's freaking out. <laughs> There's no refresh or anything. I can just go in. Mm, he does have enough mana now, but this is actually not really that important. Got him. Nice. Yeah, at the end it came down to execution at the end. Like execution in the fight. But we got him. I suppose getting swarmed by a horde of illusions is a bit is a bit freaky. Um my guess would actually be he used the BKB to preserve mana so he has his ultimate ready. But that's just not that, yeah. So I mean the illusions were useful. I don't want to like discredit them. There was definitely value to just like throwing the illusions from a distance and then just burning all of our opponent's mana so they can't really fight. Eh, eh, we got him. We got him. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.